Is that okay? Good? That's Since the omen, yeah. Okay, so while we're doing, we're doing this video, um, we're doing a sound test. Doing the video for the history of uh, St. Colin Kills. Right. It's a big year for the parish with different things going up. Yeah. Congratulations for having a 50th anniversary of being a priest. Just wish Father Pat many congratulations in reaching such a milestone in his priesthood. Oh well, look, we all love him <laughs> and miss him. Well, Father Pat calls himself the, the conductor of the great orchestra. So he is a great person for enabling people to use their gifts and talents um, within the parish um, setting. Congratulations on your 15th anniversary. <laughs> everyone in the parish just absolutely loves Father Pat. He's so gentle, he's so kind to everyone. He's just always talking about community. It's his, his big thing and it really gets across to the, the parishioners themselves who feel such a, a pride for the, for the parish. So Pat, I would say thank you for 50 years of devoted service and for your commitment to priesthood. Uh, thank you for your support and encouragement to me personally during bad times and good. And congratulations, Edmonto Senos. I'd like to say congratulations to Father Pat and say how much we all love him and appreciate him. It's great for us to be here to celebrate his golden jubilee and to give thanks to God for his priesthood and all that he, he has done through his ministry in these years. Father Patrick Hennessy was born in rural Ireland, son of David and Bridget, and brother to four sisters, Rosemary, Nell, May and Susan. He grew up in County Limerick, in Glen Roo, as part of a close family. He was particularly close to his Aunt Alice, who has gone before us. He used to come on uh, holidays to our house, and I always thought he was very, very tall and very, very big. Now, at that time, I was finding maths problems uh, a big challenge, and my mother very wisely suggested that when Pat would come on holidays, he'd be my tutor. So we bought a special sum copy, and Pat and myself used to sit down and read through all these maths problems and Pat helped me to solve the problem and to uh, get the solutions to, to my difficulties. After school he attended seminary at St John's College, Waterford. Father Patrick Hennessy was ordained to the priesthood in 1969. His first appointment was for five years in St Colum Kills in Rutherglen. Since I, I knew him very briefly originally when he came to the parish, that was a way back, that 50 years ago, and uh, he was a big sprightly young man, and now he's a big sprightly old man, like myself. I think that he has been a wonderful addition to our parish. I was here when he came to the parish, when he was 24 years old, a fine big fella at that age, quite, uh, just getting used to parish work, you know, but no, a great man. Uh, he, when he first came to this parish, he christened my daughter. So I gave him a picture of it a little while ago. Rather different Father Hennessy from what he is now, but wonderful, wonderful. The days gone by, they used to read the Bands of Manage. And the Bands of Manage were read three times for the prospective candidates who were about to be married in that church. And on one occasion, because of his height, I suspect the reason that there were errors made was because Father was so tall and the lectern was lower down and they had difficulty reading at that, and they weren't allowed to lift the lectern or the book up. And he would start and he would say that he would read the bands of marriage for 
John McSwiggan and Mary Wellington for the first time, and then Robert Brown and Isabel Cameron, for, and then he would stop and he would say, I know, those bands that I read for the third time were actually for the ones for the first and the ones for the third. I will now read the bands and marriage for the third time for the first persons. And of course the place was in an uproar. He came here as a curate and uh, my two sons were on the altar serving boys and now they're both over 60. And him, he, he has the same sense of humour as me. We, we'll get ourselves into trouble, that's what's going to happen. I remember him back in the late 60s when he, when he first arrived as a young man straight out of the, the bog in Ireland and uh, he, uh, he had a great style about him, he was, he was very young, he was quite nervy, um, still is a bit nervy when he speaks uh, at Mass, but he loved a lot of the kind of life of the community, you know, a lot of the sporting life. Uh, he, was a, he was a very fit young man in fact, you know, played a lot of squash, and cycling, and golf and so on. I remember as a very genial uh, young Irishman who was so nice with the people and just a really nice priest. I remember Father as a young priest I taught in the school and Father used to come in and he was excellent with the children if they could understand what he said. <laughs> the Irish accent I think was thicker then but he's great, he's lovely and I'm so glad he's here. Father here, and he was first ordained. He came up to bless my house and moved into a new house. And he was in the lounge playing football with my son. And in the, so they had a cocktail cabinet, and the ball went through the cabinet. And James blamed Father Henry, saying Father Henry to blame James. <laughs> so that's <laughs> that was when he was story. young. <laughs> A good story that Father Pat tells to everyone except the women in my family is he went to visit my grandfather one time and all of the women in the, that were in the house they were out shopping and he was by himself and he was bored so Father Pat went in and he was like oh Jimmy you know, is there anything you'd like to do you know and he was like oh I could really go for a pint but the women wouldn't approve so he was right okay so he, he drove them down to Chapman's right and they were in for a pint uh, my grandfather goes up and gets around what you want, Father? And he's like, oh, I can't drink, you know. Oh, he's driving. And uh, he's like, oh, I'll have one for you. So he goes and he gets himself two pints. <laughs> and then he's back up the road in time for all the women coming in. They were all out. Now, they didn't know about that for years, right? The father Pat never told anyone, and my granddad never peeped the word. So about, it must be around 20 years after it happened, father Pat finally told the family <laughs> about that day. Hi Father Pan, we wish you all the best this year for your celebrations and we all love you in the parish. Don't tell him anything and he helps you, you know. I don't ask him for money, I get enough, Tim is asking me for it. Um, well congratulations Father, um, I've known you for quite a long time now and uh, I just want to say thank you. One thing I'd like to say about myself and my sisters, he still calls us the McCann girls and it makes us feel so much Young younger again. than him. <laughs> <laughs> and he's the kind of man, he's so gentle and patient with you that even when you do something wrong or make a mistake uh, or he wants you to do something for him, he never directly says anything to you. Well, he's, he says it in a way, such a way as, well, you know, I could, maybe somebody could do that. And then you'd be like, oh, he's actually asked me to do something. And that's the gentleness of the man. Uh, and I have been blessed in the seven years I've been here, and there's no doubt about it and the church is richer for a man of his stature. Congratulations, Father Pat, we all love you. Well, he's what a priest should be. Father Hennessy, I'd love to see him saying the Mass, because when Father Bernard gets it, it's cheerio, 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 and I don't know if he's saying cheerio or come back in again. Father Hennessy, all the best when it comes. I'll see him anyway before I come. They baptised me. They baptised you? Well, sometimes when we're at Mass, we're sitting down the front, we sometimes laugh. OK, um, just congratulations, Father Pat. Um, we come out of our way to come to St Colm Kills every week because of his great stories and a great selection of priests here as well. So it's a wonderful community and it's great to be part of it. From 1974, he served in St James's Coat Bridge before teaching in our national seminaries. 
I went to Coatbridge, yeah, lovely, St. James's in, in uh, Kirk Shaw's. And then after that, I, I went down to Lang Bank for a year and then up to, to Blair's College for until 1986. Firstly, he served in St. Vincent's Lang Bank in 1977 and then in Blair's College, Aberdeen, from 1978 to 1986. Well, he was a wee bit older than me, a few years older than me, and, but he was a great companion on the staff in Blair's and a great, a great um, man to have in, there in the way he cared for the, the young men under uh, whom we taught there and lived with. And he was a great companion too for the other staff members. He was always full of fun and intrigue and he kept us all going, trying to second guess what his next um, thoughts would be. Um, I remember only a few days after I arrived here, he's sitting at breakfast and he's saying, you know, Bernard, there's a book that I want. It's a great book, but I can't get it because it's online, on the internet. I said, oh, right, Father, OK. Yes, it's on a, a website called After a Rainforest. You've probably not heard of it. It's called Amazon. I said, oh, right, OK. I know, Amazon, yep, yep, well. Um, but I can't get it because I'm not online, you know. I said, do you want me to get the book for you, Father? Oh, sure, sure, that'd be great. Now, unbeknown to me, he's totally reeling me in and constantly does that um, every day. But I've got to know him now, so I know to be on guard against any foolery. <laughs> I like about him that he tells a lot of good stories and he's a good priest. Congratulations, 50 fantastic girls. I've known you for over 40 of them. First met you when you began teaching me in Langbank in 1977 and great to see you still going now. And congratulations Father Pat, you're a lovely kind gentleman and you deserve it. I just think he's an excellent role model for the community um, and his, his dedication to the Christian faith, you know, um, and I just wish him all the very best and care. Every congratulations on his, his great achievement, you know, so. Thanks very much for being a priest. Father Hennessy arrived in St Anne's Kaiser when I was the president of St Vincent de Paul. He was a great priest and was always cooperative with us. One day, he visited our house and Philip, who was only a child at the time, was crawling all over him, climbing all over him. And his mum had said to Philip, Philip, will you leave father alone? Father says, listen, I've got a sister and she's got children, just let them be. Father was a great friend of everybody in the parish and uh, we were sadly missed in LA. I suppose my journey in life began with Father Pat. He baptised me on the 15th of May 1988 in Our Lady in St Anne's in Hamilton. And I think it's just fantastic that I've been appointed um, his curate here in my first parish um, to be with him. It's just, um, it's just fantastic. Father Hennessy loved his bike. I once asked him why he cycled so much locally because Hamilton is quite hilly and he had a car in the garage. His answer was, in a car, you just wave to friends passing by, but on my bike, I can easily stop and have a chat and ask how they are. He moved to St Anne's in Hamilton until 1988 when he finally achieved his ambition of serving the Missionary Church in Peru from 1989 to 1999. He arrived in Peru uh, in 19... 90, and I left the mountains in 1990. You know, he, like I say, he, he was the great help to me. You know, great, com great company. You know, we had our meetings every Monday. You know, to decide, you know, what to do during the week, who would take the masses, and where and when. And uh, like we had a number of villages along the coast, we had, and there were two valleys. You know, there was the, the valley of Warme itself, 
and then there was the valley of Culebras and Paddy went up all those areas and covered all those areas on he went up he didn't like driving up there he drove up there now and again but mostly he went on the back of a truck Quiero unirme a esta gran celebración de las bodas de oro sacerdotales del padre Patricio Él me ayudó a descubrir mi vocación sacerdotal cuando salíamos como misioneros a Guayán, Malvas, Cochapetí, San Miguel. Aprendí mucho de él. Valoro siempre su humildad, su sencillez, su trabajo con los niños, con los jóvenes, con los ancianos. Realmente descubrí en él un hombre de Dios. Muchas felicidades, Padre Patricio. Un abrazo a la distancia. Muchas bendiciones en este día tan especial para ti. Now, I would be most grateful to him, you know, for all the help that he gave to me while I was there, you know. I, you know, uh, with uh, with family catechetics that we had, and I, he, he, you might say he clued me in on, on the names of the families of the people who were there and who were the friends and who were enemies in a sense, you know, so I mean, where the battle lines were drawn, you know, but, uh, you know, he was really very, 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 very friendly and very, very helpful, you know, yeah. In 1999, he returned to the Diocese of Motherwell, serving as parish priest in St. Vincent Paul's Eskil Bride for 11 years, before returning to St. Colm Kills in 2010. Well, Father Pat, congratulations and God bless you on 50 years of service and ministry. You were such a wonderful example to us all the years that you were here. We loved you so much and you'll remember my mum loved you so much and my mum-in-law and my Brendan and you were such a shepherd to us. All the, the Gospels this weekend have been about the Good Shepherd. What a shepherd you are. God bless you. I went to East Kilbride. St Vincent Paul, and then a great time up there. Oh, I would say thank you very much for making me be a reader, uh, telling me that uh, the devil loves shyness, so I appreciated that. And then the follow-up was that I went to Africa and helped them build the church and a community centre, all through his example. We thoroughly enjoyed your time here. There's only really one thing that I would say, and that is for all the times of golf, games that we have played and for all the weather conditions that we have played in for somebody to have won every single game with a handicap that you've got somebody's telling high somewhere it's your jubilee and i always enjoyed your singing so hope we'll hear a wee song uh, during the mass st colin kills us about community and about looking after people especially People might be struggling a wee bit, or, you know, sick people as well. Terrific, uh, there's a great, um, the great team of Eucharistic ministers here, you know, and they, they faithfully visit uh, sick and housebound people every week. But, so, and uh, so that's, you know, the, the, there's, there's uh, all those things can, we kind of say, well, don't be shy. Be part of it. We're just so lucky to have him. He's been here for many years. He was here and then he went back, he went away again. And then he went to Peru to do his missions, which he just loved and brought our Lord to the people in the hills of Peru. So that was amazing. I'd just like to congratulate Pat on uh, Father Pat on his Golden Jubilee uh, from Daniel Barrett, the singer for upstairs. Congratulations on serving us for so long. Everybody has great respect for him, and on the behalf of the UCM, we thank God for having him here. Father Hennessy is a very good and holy man, and may he stay here a long time. He's been a great supporter of the parish, and particularly of the Saint the Paul Association that I'm involved in. He's always been supportive in any work that we've tried to do. The school wouldn't be the same without him coming in and out of the school. Um, the children and the parents and the teachers and the rest of the staff in the school know Father Pat just as well as Father Bernard and the guys down at the, the, church, the church house there. 
Um, so yeah, he's an integral part of the school. So like if like one was like rubbish and then ten was like amazing, Father Pat would get an eleven because like they're just like fantastic. Um, I'd just like to say congratulations for being a priest in this church for so long and helping everyone for everything that they've been through. He's a good priest and he'll never get, like, just say it was or in the Ultra server and he forgot something that he wouldn't, he would just say, Oren, I need the chalice or the, um, the bread. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't get angry? No. Would Father Bernard get angry if he forgot something? Yes. Like, <laughs> At the centre of Father Pat's life is his relationship with Jesus Christ. He is a great man of prayer. Um, all too often, you know, I'll pop into his room um, to ask something or uh, to pass a message on, and he's saying his prayers. Um, he's down in the, the chapel before Mass. Um, he's always the bravery um, in his hand or his kindle that he's always trying to get me or Deacon Bill to reset. Um, but he is always um, a man of um, prayer. He's just made me welcome at home, you know. He's, he's made it at home, you know. When people say it at home, you know, you don't know what a home is. But in, until you actually get received into the church and Father Pat actually speaks to you for your, for your first confession, you go, actually, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> I love Father Hennessy. And I hope he's always better. And all the people in the hall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Father Pat, we just love you. I'm the choir mistress of St. Colum Kells Choir, and we just love you very much. And we're so glad you've reached this milestone. Yes. Father Pat, we all love you in this parish. And I was fortunate enough to be one of the first babies to be born in this church. Just have a holy and happy day and then we look forward to going to Iona the next day. I want to thank you for the years that you have been such a good shepherd, not only in our parish, but in all the other parishes you've served. He has a, a small statue that he brings out usually every year of, of Jesus as a good shepherd. And I think it's one of his favourite gospel readings because it, it captures a lot of what I think of his own faith, understanding, and his own relationship with Christ. A lovely man, easy to deal with, ask him for anything, and he'll do his best to do in the church. We're delighted to have him here. Hope he stays here long enough. He's been a great priest, a gem. He really is. Uh, yep, I think everybody thinks the world of him. Yeah, and we've been lucky to have him as a parish priest here. We appreciate what he, what he tells us from the past, and also appreciate his wisdom and his encouragement to us as priests in the present when he's seen now as one of the perhaps the grandfathers amongst us and somebody whose whose wisdom is worth um, listening to. I'd like to offer my congratulations to Father Pat and his Golden Jubilee. <laughs> Good luck to you, Father. It's been a pleasure having you and your bowling's coming on tremendously. You'll win your own trophy one of these days. Hey, Father Pat has always been a great support for us. He allowed us to get on with things. He's been a great priest in this parish for so many years. Father Pat, all the best for his 50th anniversary. I remember one thing yeah, he, he said there when I got there, he said, look, never forget your prayers. Thank you for being a priest and teaching everyone about God. I just hope he lives forever. Uh, St Paul uh, to Colossians uh, chapter 3 verse 12, it says, Therefore as God's chosen people, and holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And that's Father Pat Hennessy. For he's a jolly good fellow, for he's a jolly good fellow.